Okay, good. Okay, so as you listen to every word that I say, you'll be stunned to realize that there's hope for supposedly incurable diseases. And tonight we're going to talk about food allergies and food sensitivities and what the difference is between them. Some of the most common allergens and how to get rid of them. About 10% of the people in the US, and it's probably the same or worse in South Africa, have a food allergy. And it might, as I said, a very strong response and severe inflammation or even anaph anaphylactic shock which may be life-threatening. It's the immune system's job to protect the body from foreign invaders, such as germs, bacteria, viruses, and the like. A food, food allergy happens when the immune system reacts to harmless protein, an allergen. Now you've heard of hist antihistamines, but what is histamine? It's like a bouncer at a nightclub that's there to throw out the people or the allergen that is giving the body, in this case, trouble. And they're produced by the mast cells and they can affect the muscles, such as asthma, where the throat closes up and they may even cause an anaphylactic shock, which could result in death. Now, over-the-counter antihistamines work but they have side effects like nausea and drowsiness. So what we need to do is we need to have natural antihistamines, which will not cause any of these problems. Now, there's always an emotional element to these things. And um, the emotional element that one normally finds is that there could be hostility towards a partner or a family environment that's causing the body to react to allergens. It could be suppressed grief and controlling or a controlling and dominated childhood. Poor boundaries and offended by people who have invasive personalities. Okay, so in autoimmunity, we have a situation where there, the, there are a type of T cell involved and it's different in allergies because there are different cells involved when it comes to allergies. In an autoimmune response, tissue destruction occurs with allergies. The immune system reacts to harmless allergens. In, in, interestingly, this is the same response that the immune system uses to repel parasites, viruses and bacteria from the body. And there are more than 80 types of autoimmune disease that affect a wide range of body parts. Now it's believed that 75% of autoimmune conditions are caused by the environment. Top reasons would be gluten sensitivity, GMOs, genetically modified, modified foods, etc., gut dysfunction, and remember that 80% of the immune system is in the gut. Toxins, infections, stress and hormones, neurological stress. These are all different possibilities that might be causing the problem. Now, allergies are, um, are sensitive, sensitivities and other molecules. So for allergens, You've got these ones here that are the main, the main culprits. And you've got milk, which is number one, eggs, fish, so and uh, crustacean sea, uh, sea, uh, shellfish, tree nuts, almond, walnuts, pecans, and of course, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. Now, milk can cause mucus in people who are allergic to it, a sinus drip, post-nasal drip, phlegm, all the symptoms of a cold. So often one does not catch a cold, 
but one eats it. So the, the actual symptoms seem just like a cold, but they can be allergies. Now, food allergy is when your immune system overreacts to a protein and you, uh, that you've consumed, and food, food allergies can be life-threatening. A food allergy is much more dangerous than a food intolerance because the, a food intolerance doesn't involve the immune system. For, your, for example, an allergy to cow's milk is the most common allergy amongst young children. People who are lactose intolerant, intolerant are in, uh, lack the enzyme lactase. <clears throat> so with lactase, um, the, the people are unable to digest lactose. That's the sugar in the milk. Now, the fact of the matter is that you can't really fix that because that is a genetic issue because there is a problem with the genes. And so a, a, um, a, an intolerance with lactose, you would have to, for instance, take lactase, but you can't fix it by fixing the immune system because the immune system is not at all involved in that. And they may experience, that's people who have lactose intolerance, uh, cramps, nausea, gas, bloating, and diarrhea. It's normally generalized discomfort. Uncomfortable, yes. Life-threatening, no. Now, most children outgrow their milk allergy. And milk allergy is still one of the most common adult allergens. So about 70% of adults who have milk allergy can take baked milk. The cooking process changes the protein structure in the milk. Now, some of the symptoms of food allergies, uh, hives, urticaria, or uh, flushed skin or rash, tingling or itchy sensation in the mouth, face, tongue, or lip swelling, vomiting or diarrhea, abnormal cramps, coughing or wheezing, dizziness and lightheadedness, swelling of the throat and vocal cords, difficulty breathing, even loss of consciousness. So as we said, anaphylaxis can cause life-threatening conditions where the people react and uh, it can, uh, can constrict lung airways, uh, can severely lower blood pressure, you can have shock, suffocation because of the swelling of the throat and the larynx. Now, food sensitivities in the mind. People don't realize that sometimes they are feeling anxious, irritable, and have mental confusion and similar things because of food allergies. One of the studies uh, that I saw um, was that 160 schizophrenic patients were given mega doses of vitamins and other therapies to treat their allergies. And out of the 160, 100 were normal. Schizophrenia had disappeared by just removing the allergies. So any forward thinking psychiatrist or psychologist should actually realize that the problem can also be allergies. Whereas some time ago, and in many cases these days, people still, or psychiatrists and psychologists, still don't realize that it could be an allergy that's affecting their clients. Now, what do you do if you have an attack? Well, clearly you would stop eating what you suspect would be the issue and drink water and even take zeolite because zeolite can take out the, the actual um, uh, food uh, or the allergens in the food because they will be positively charged and zeolite is negatively charged. So it would attract the actual allergen into it and it would be carried out in the normal way. And a little bit later, we'll be looking at some remedies that we can use for food allergies. Now, one way of treating them is an elimination diet. 
and you can stop eating all possible foods that might be causing the problem. Normally for about a month, then you reintroduce the foods one at a time and see if, the, if there is a problem. Sometimes by doing this, the immune system resets itself and then you don't have to have allergies of the sort that you had before. So there are certain allergies which are fixed and they, and they last for life basically and you have to deal with those. And then there are non-fixed allergies and those allergies might come and go. So as the immune system notes something that it wants to attack or it needs, believes it needs to attack, then the allergies will show up. And then a while later, the, uh, the allergies might disappear. For example, I have one lady who only eats eggs once a week. If she eats them more than once a week, then they show up as an allergy. But once a week, it's fine. She doesn't have allergies on uh, that week. Okay? Now, remember, all allergies originate in the gut. We're talking about food allergies now. We're not talking about breathe-in allergies like pollen, etc. So they originate in the gut, and often it can be a situation with leaky gut, where you could have had a bacteria in the gut, and the tight junctions in the gut will start to open up. And some of the protein or food particles leak into the bloodstream. Now, as they do, your immune system reacts to the the particles, whatever they might be in the blood, and you get an allergic reaction. So it could be general food particles, proteins, and other particles that might leak through. Remember that the wall of the gut is very, very thin. It's only one cell thick, and it's very easy for that to become permeable, especially if the microbiome is not in good condition. So that we'll talk about a bit later as well. <clears throat> now, sometimes if you have two proteins that are very similar and look similar to your immune system, the, the immune system might attack one or the other protein. So you might, for example, have an allergy for almonds and then peanuts may have a similar, have a similar protein and uh, and might, they might, uh, you might have an allergic reaction to peanuts. And another, another situation is that type 1 diabetes is believed to be an autoimmune condition. And it appears that the, the A1 beta casein and the beta cells in the pancreas are very, very similar. So A1 casein, which is in, in milk, um, might in susceptible people cause an allergy, an allergy, an allergic reaction, and the immune system might see that beta cells in the in the Isles of Longerons in the pancreas, which is where insulin is manufactured, as the same as casein. So, in susceptible people, type one diabetes, diabetes could be caused by an allergy to milk. Or some other allergy it could be parasites in the in the uh, in the pancreas, and the immune system attacks the pancreas. But then we're talking about autoimmune conditions, not just allergies in that case. But susceptible people could end up with a big problem when it comes to these things. Now, I don't know if you've all heard, but uh, there's something called the blue zones. Now, the blue zones are five areas in the world where a fellow by the name of Dan uh, Butner, who worked for National Geographics, went around the world looking for the oldest lived people, the places with the most centenarians, and he dubbed them the blue zones. And that's where people live the longest and the healthiest. And the places were Okinawa in Japan, the island of Sardinia in Italy, Nokoya in Costa Rica, Ikaria in Greece, and Loma Lima in California. Now, the blue zones are where people live like they lived 
hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago. And then many, many people who, who lived there into their, into their um, years, the, the ancient years of over 100 years old. And the secret is that they have a lifestyle that works for them. And there's certain things to that lifestyle. And they don't have allergies. So their lifestyle means that they have um, family relations. So, they, so they're stressed, stressless, or very, very little stress. They, they, have, they look after one another. They have at least five friends that they keep for life in, in Okinawa in Japan. In, um, in the different areas, they also have a religious practice of some sort. They, they in Okinawa, they'll, they'll think of their ancestors. This is to get rid of stress. In uh, the, the um, uh, Seventh-day Adventists who live in, in California, in uh, Loma Lima, uh, Lima, Lima um, they will pray. And each one has a different method of dealing with stress. They also have um, one or two glasses of wine. Most of them have one or two glasses of wine every night. So that has certain um, healing properties to it, but not in excess. They also don't overeat. They eat maximum 80% of the amount that would fill them up. So at 80% 80 they don't put on weight. At 80% their bodies can handle the stress uh, of, of the digestion. They also tend to fast or, or uh, intermittent fast, and that helps them to live long and healthy lives. Now, our lives in the Western world tend to be extremely stressful, and they cause a lot of issues for us health-wise. Give you one example. One of the people who came from the blue zone, a, a blue zone in, in the Mediterranean, one of the islands, went to America and he worked and lived in America and he contracted cancer. So he went to his oncologists and they told him he had six months to live. No hope, just six months to live and he was going to die. And he decided that he would go home and be with his friends and family at home. And he went home to the island. And as he lived on the island, six months passed and he wasn't get, getting worse. He didn't die. And what happened was he actually got better. And he did the, the walking. They do, do a lot of walking and exercise, a lot of gardening etc. And 20 years later, he was still alive, healthy as anything. So he decided to go back to America and see how his oncologists were doing, how the people were doing there. And he went back to America. And then later on, he came back to the island. And his friends on the island asked him, so tell me, how are your oncologists? And he answered, they're all dead. So just that lifestyle made such a difference. <clears throat> so what we're talking about here is a lifestyle that we need to, to upkeep. We need to create our own blue zones. Then we will be able to get rid of allergies and many, many other conditions that we suffer with in the Western world. Now, <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about autophagy, and that's the body's cellular re uh, recycling uh, system. It allows for cellular repairs. The cells can disseminate, disseminate or disassemble junk parts in the cells and repurpose those parts and make them into new and usable parts. Autophagy keeps your cells in good condition the cells can jettison parts that do not they do not need, and there's a link between dementia, Parkinson disease, and other and other diseases of the mind, 
um, that relate to impaired autophagy. And allergies relate to impaired autophagy as well. So the process of autophagy is involved in the repair of DNA and faulty micro, uh, mitochondria, which is the powerhouses of the cells. So it's involved in protecting your body from aging and even cancer, and of course, allergies. So not only does it give you a beautiful body and younger looking body, but it's also be a better functioning body. And it helps protect you from viruses like Epstein-Barr, uh, HPV, and the like. Now, the benefits of, of autophagy are that it modulates the immune system. Now, we know that allergies and autoimmunity, autoimmune issues, will, um, will, will be the cause of the... Uh, of the the the, the uh, e, uh, re immune reacting, so if it's modulated, it's not too high, it's not too low, because we want a, a strong and and, um, and healthy immune system, but we don't want it too strong and we don't want it too weak. So it needs to be modulated or balanced. Autophagy promotes smoother and healthier skin, so it clears out all the junk out of the skin. So all the different issues with the skin can be cleaned up in this way. And it supports healthy aging, promotes heart health. It even removes, removes plaque from the arteries and the blood vessels. Now we know that there's more to that, as we've spoken before, that it needs vitamin C and different things, uh, different nutrients. But autophagy can help to repair those blocked arteries. It boosts the, the, the um, metabolism, replaces parts, as I said, including the mitochondria and any other part of the cell that needs to be replaced. It also assists in brain health. It even removes the amyloid plaque, which is one of the main causes of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. Remember that our bodies generate 500 billion new cells every day. However, in, in diseases like cancer, the problem is not new cells. The cancer, the, the cancer is an issue of cells not dying. So when autophagy is working well, the cells will die off and they'll be replaced with new and healthy cells. So it's a very, very important thing. How do we promote autophagy? Because that's very important for, for allergies, for autoimmune conditions, for so many things, as I've mentioned, or for, for longevity. You want to live to 100, autophagy is better be working well in your body. So some of the ways we can do it is fasting, and it's an intermittent fasting, which we'll talk about just now. Even a keto diet, which is high in fiber, high in fat, and we can look at ever oil and coconut, these different oils. And uh, we should cut out carbohydrates, especially processed carbs and simple sugars. Even eating blueberries and other forms of berries promotes autophagy. 70%, here's a good one, 70% of chocolate and cacao. 70% dark chocolate, sorry, and cacao promote autophagy. Green tea. Drinking green tea is really good for autophagy and that's healing and combating allergies in this case. MCT, medium chain, chain triglycerides oil. That's uh, coconut and um, uh, other oils or coconut oil itself can promote autophagy. Oh. Eating Granites, red grapes, as I mentioned, red wine, which they do, they, they use. Um, so, so we also have supplements that can do the job. One of them is quercetin, resveratrol, bromine, wow. and turmeric. Now these, mitotophagy, 
And what they also do is they reduce inflammation in the body. So very, very important. President. You, you can uh, reduce the, um, the different uh, uh, inflammations in the body, all over the body, because allergies will cause inflammation, autoimmune conditions will cause inflammation, sickness and disease will cause inflammation. So it's a tremendously powerful remedy. And as I mentioned last time, these are all available from the Biosol website. Okay, and then berberine. Now, berberine is a wonderful product. What it does, it's traditionally used for, for uh, lowering inflammation, promotes autophagy, reduces pain, swelling, blood pressure, blood sugar levels. So people use it for diabetes as well. So if the blood sugars aren't balanced, this can uh, reduce blood sugar very, very easily and quickly. And it's anti, uh, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and has anti-cancer effects. So it affects uh, heart disease. It increases the, the, the uh, neuron growth. So it fights degenerative brain disease as well. And uh, in, improves physio, uh, physiological processes. Alzheimer's disease, reduces arthritic pain, inflammation, and it's a very, very effect, effective antihistamine. So as we mentioned earlier, Antihistamines uh, that are OTC over the counter, which are made from pharmaceutical drugs and uh, petrochemicals, can have a lot of side effects and can um, cause more problems than they solve. But with the natural antihistamines, it sorts out the problem easily. It's called the exercise pill because it has the same effect as exercise on the body. And it induces, it in, induces autophagy by activating AMPK protein called the meta metabolic master switch. Metabolic master switch is AMPK protein. And that also helps with weight loss. It's the ultimate supplement to boost metabolism. It helps with insulin resistance in diabetes, as we said, and it lowers cholesterol and high blood pressure. It's cancer, cancer fighting properties and heart and gut will also help by that. So it will help to balance the microbiome. So a very, very powerful remedy. Now exercise. We know that exercise is good for just about everything, but we don't have to be running marathons where we can stand a chance of being injured or, or working out with heavy, heavy weights at the gym, walking, jogging, just doing simple, very low level exercises can make a huge difference uh, to autophagy. And for instance, with diabetes, we know that if you exercise 20 minutes after eating food, exercise will assist or the circulation and the increased met metabolism will help to take the sugars into the muscles rather than leaving them in the blood where there are major problems. Okay, one of the things we can do is intermittent fasting. And um, we know that that generates autoph uh, autophagy. And um, in some cases, it's possible to reverse allergies just with an, uh, uh, intermittent fasting and not even serious fasting. So this is the first place to start. We should be intermittently fasting. So our fasting window should probably be between, eight, be between 18 and 20 hours a day. Possibly only eating one meal a day. And I know it sounds horrific, but actually it's not that bad. Once you get used to it, it, it isn't actually much of a problem because you make up your mind, you're not going to eat at those times and you'll uh, be able to do it quite simply, but obviously it's a um, it's a liquid fast, so you can have your green tea and you can have your um, mana brew, which is a, a coffee supplement. You can have your water, much as you want, and that helps you so you don't have absolute craving. Autophagy will 
show up possibly 18 hours of, uh, after you've been fasting. So it could show up on uh, during your your 24 hour fast, um, or 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 your 18 hour sorry your 18 hour fast in intermittent fasting. Uh, many studies show the effectiveness of autophagy um, when it comes to autoimmune issues. Now, the next level is you could fast one day a week for 24 hours. Say, so take a Wednesday, for example, and you don't have supper on the Tuesday night, and then you have breakfast on the Thursday morning. So it's even longer than 24 hours, or you could just have supper on the Wednesday night. The longer you do it, the more healthy it is, the more it will help you age. Both my parents died at a very old age. My, my dad was 99. My mom was 98 when she died. And I asked them, tell me what was the secret to you living so long? And one of the things that my dad told me was that he used to not overeat. He used to eat the 80% rule, which is one of the, the, the blue zone rules, which he didn't know about, but he, he worked it out himself. And he used to fast. They both used to fast for religious reasons every Wednesday. None fail. Every Wednesday, they would not eat. And that was just the way it was, year in, year out, until they were old, old, old. They also used to take um, uh, uh, probiotics in uh, mass form, uh, things like that. So over time, your allergies can be reduced by fasting. And if you have allergies, you'll, uh, then you'll have inflammation and we'll have some inflammation and that will be re reduced. We know that short-term inflammation, acute inflammation is very important because it's the immune system taking uh, blood and uh, repair cells to the site that's where it's needed. But long-term inflammation causes a lot of problems and can even cause brain issues, Alzheimer's, other forms of dementia. Now, when you don't eat, your gut has a chance to repair itself. If we keep feeding our guts, our stomachs will, will not be able to repair because they're continuously digesting. Now, we know that we shouldn't eat very close to bedtime so that our digestion should be pretty much complete by the time we get into bed. Then the gut can repair. Once the gut begins to repair, then we'll find that the, uh, the, the, the immune system will balance itself and won't go attacking things it shouldn't attack, and our allergies and autoimmune conditions will decrease. Fasting also helps to, uh, to improve the microbiome, micro diversity. So in other words, your, 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 your bacteria, your friendly bacteria will improve, and your unfriendly bacteria will die off. And um, that can be very, very helpful because bacteria help you to detoxify as well. Now, a person who is toxic with metals um, will be liable for autoimmune conditions because metals can get into the cells and then the immune system will try and attack those metals and, and uh, take out the cells at the same time, which will cause an autoimmune uh, reaction. So it's very, very important that we detoxify, and a lot of the detoxification is caused or assisted by the microbiome. I'll give you an example. With autism, most autistic babies are born with a C-section operation. Now, the C-section operation is a problem for those children because what happens is, with a C-section, the, the child is not, doesn't pass through the normal birth channel where it comes into contact with, them, with the mother's microbiome, the mother's uh, friendly bacteria. So it passes out through, uh, without touching the mother's um, uh, bacteria. 
And then when it, it, uh, it arrives in this world, it, the first thing it gets, guess what? An injection of antibiotics, a strong injection of antibiotics. So that kills it off the any microbiome that it might have had. Now, this means that the child can't detoxify very well. And sometimes that child might be forced to take a jab to get into school. This means any jab of any sort. But because it doesn't detox in a meaningful way, what happens is it um, stores up the toxins and that can be a cause of autism and other issues. So that is a, that is a real, real problem. Now, uh, B6 can be very helpful in relieving allergic reactions. So B6 is an important uh, uh, B vitamin, a water-soluble vitamin that, uh, that can actually uh, work, work on the histamines and, uh, and take away the, the symptoms of an, an, an allergic reaction. The next, the next one is vitamin D3. Now, vitamin D3 is not a vitamin, it's actually a hormone. And it's the most important hormone for instructing the immune system. I'm not going to talk about that tonight. Next time, we're going to do something on autoimmune conditions. And I'm going to talk about a, um, a strong way of using vitamin D3 to get rid of autoimmune and allergies. There's a scientific way that's been designed and you have a very, very good result with that. But that will come with our next session, not, not tonight. Okay, another one of the, of the remedies is one of the tinctures. It's called allergy remedy. It's, it's um, uh, very good for allergic reaction. It's a natural antihistamine. It's used to treat asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, sinus congestion, lupus, and the like. So it's an excellent um, uh, remedy. Contains black walnut, stinging nettle, goldenrod, arbrite, salsa perelia, and dandelion. So all of these are excellent for uh, Im immune system and, and uh, reactions to foods and, uh, and environmental reactions. Then we've got asthma remedy, and uh, asthma remedy uh, is is good for all asthmatic conditions, tightness of the chest, difficulty breathing with asthma, of course. It's got the bilia, uh, l campomine, -camp -camp and uh, comfrey, cold's foot, thyme, nettle, chamomile, and plantain. So that's that one. That's excellent, and then. Autoimmune remedy is used for balancing the and healing the immune system with autoimmune conditions such as lupus, MS, uh, fibromyalgia, rheumatoid arthritis, and that also contains a number of different herbs in tincture form. So that's the end of the presentation for tonight. So. I'm going to stop sharing. And there we are. Thank you, Dr. Steve. That was great. Pleasure. Thank you. Right. You know the drill. Who's got questions for Dr. Steve? Um, okay. Marlene, have you got any allergies? I don't think I have. Although when I'm sneezing a lot, like in the morning or whatever, I kind of think there is an allergy, but then it's over for the morning. So I don't know perhaps if that is or not. Okay. Yes, it could be. Um, but obviously you could even nebulize with the hypochlorous acid, just to clear any, any pollen or whatever might be in, in, the, uh, in, 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 in the lungs, whatever. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Teresa, have you got anything? Questions? Um, yes. Um, I think for me, Dr. Steve, I've got a terrible, I don't know if it's almost like an eczema on my, on my left hand. Um, and it's on the top of my hand. Um, and I find that it's like the sun heat tends to, to aggravate the problem. And I've been using um, like colloidal silver on it. And it seems to have gotten better. But I kind of like think it's very much related to, I don't know, a gut issue. Am I right? Okay, is it always there or does it come and go? No, it it comes and goes. I ha um, I think the last time I had it was about four years ago and it's now started again. So I think I've had it now for about, when I say like two weeks, but I also find my, um, I'm very, very sensitive to um, any, let's say body products or whatever that might have chemicals in. I haven't used chemical products for a long time, but I also think at work, when a person's having to use the, the, the soap in the, in the ladies, I don't think that really <laughs> helps my issue. Yeah, no, agreed. Okay, first of all, the, the skin is a reflection of the internal organs. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's a reflection of possibly your liver. Yeah. The microbiome is very, very involved in that. Mm -hmm. So so one could even think about doing a parasite cleanse and a liver cleanse. That will yeah. often have that type of uh, uh, condition. Okay. So all right. And, so and I can just obviously just get the um, buy the product off the, the your website. Off the Biosol website that uh, we've got okay. in there. All right. Um, and just another thing, I can't take um, wormwood. Okay. I find it 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 give, makes my heart race. So um, does yours does the parasite um, treatment have the wormwood in it? Or what can I use as an alternative then? Yeah, the parasite does um, have it in. I would just use the other two ingredients. That's wormwood and and and, um, and and sorry, wormwood cloves and black walnuts. So it's cloves and black walnuts. I would just use those. I would okay. leave. Them. Okay. Yeah, and and then after doing the parasite cleanse, then what you would do is you would. You would do the the liver cleanse, which is very important. So okay. it can, you know, there could be uh, gallstones, which are manufactured by the liver. It's quite possible. Mm. Uh, mm. There could be stones. So you have mm, to do. Yeah, it's it's possible. Uh, yeah. We all have some. Remember, the liver has over five hundred functions. So nobody has a perfect liver. Mm. It's still it's, still, it's a reservoir for sugars. It uh, it works on hormones. It works on insulin, um, mm -hmm. it works on detoxification. Mm -hmm. So we should be looking after our livers a lot better than we are now. So, okay. so if you have stones coming out or um, anything that, uh, uh, that looks a little bit dodgy, you should do a few of them, not just one. Okay. So I start off with the parasite cleanse first, or do I do them together? Like parasite and and the liver cleanse, do I do it together? Parasite cleanse is eighteen days, and yeah. then after that you do the liver flush. Okay, all right. And there's seven days of malic acid, which softens up any stones, so they'll mm -hmm. pass very easily. And then the, mm -hmm. the flush, uh, liver cleanse is actually twenty four hours. Oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah. fabulous. I'm going to be doing that. Thanks so much for your help. Pleasure. Right, um, Linda, would you like to ask a question? Hi, yes, I, I actually tuned in um, specifically for the um, allergies. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I wonder why my sound is so so poor at the moment. Um, so um, my sister has extreme allergies. She's, she gets hay fever to such a degree that she can hardly see out of her eyes. Um, so that's why I tuned in. But for myself, um, I will definitely be tuning in next week for the autoimmune 
I was diagnosed with Lyme's disease six years ago, which I've seemed to have sort of under control, but I still struggle with um, severe inflammation. So I was actually thinking of making an appointment with Dr. Steve to come and see him actually to see if I can get a grip of this inflammation that's, you know, comes and goes. So, yeah. um, okay. So first of all, your sound is good, Linda. We can hear you very clearly. Um, okay. So, so next time we're going to actually look at a, a, a real protocol for, for allergies and autoimmune that will, okay. that will work for both of them. And that's um, mega doses of vitamin uh, D3 and, uh, and some changes to the diet as well. But that's, that's more in the autoimmune, but they're almost the same because it's both a reaction by the immune system. So what we right. actually try to do is modulate the immune system. If we can get the immune system functioning well, then we, we will we'll be fine. So it's it, the immune system is basically attacking the wrong things. That's all it is. Correct. Right. So yeah. the Lyme's disease, um, well, I, I've got no idea. I was I had tick bite fever when I was six years old, which is what forty some years ago. So I'm not sure why it only manifested or flared up six years ago. Who knows? Um, okay, so so Lyme Lyme disease. Unless you, you there are ways of dealing with it uh, using um, uh, certain equipment um, and um, ozone and different different other therapies but it stays in your body. And then what happens is your immune system drops down for some reason. You might've been under stress yes. uh, six, six years ago. So then you're under stress or you're not sleeping well, any of those things, and your immune system drops. Once your immune system drops, then the actual lung can come out and, uh, and become active again. Then, then, you, then what happens is your stress goes, uh, or, or is reduced and you're sleeping better and then the immune system back in, at full strength again and then the alarm dies away. So re remember that um, a virus, for example, I'm just saying virus, today we've got one virus, 24 hours later we've got a million viruses. So if you can imagine how these things multiply. So a million after 24 hours and those million make another million each. So the number is huge. So these things multiply very, very quickly. And, sure. and with bacteria, if, they, if they're in the gut, for instance, yeast um, uh, infection, uh, once they come up, they'll come up because the immune system is suppressed. But once they're up, then they suppress the immune system. So it's a little bit difficult. So you have to be working on it all the time uh, keeping your, your immune system modulated and strong. Sure. Would you suggest the rife the rife treatments or um, we've got a we've got an ozone ozone machine. So um, which ozone machine have you got? That's one of Dion Chris's um, ozone saunas. Yeah, yeah, you can use that. That'll be helpful. Very helpful. Sure. Um, the the rifes that are generally available unfortunately not really on the on the right frequencies. You know, okay. there, was lot, there was a lot of uh, misinformation when uh, Raf was suppressed, um, and um, he was actually using much higher frequencies than the the very low frequencies that are that are used. Uh, it's it's complicated. I can't go into it tonight, but that's what right. happened. So you've got to make okay. sure two Raf that um, that's working in the in the in the the kilohertz range, not the the audio range. Right. Okay. But I'm definitely going to make a, um, an appointment with you and come and see you. Yeah, when you're ready. It's, thank you so much. Thanks for, for doing these Zoom. It's my first time and it's really, it's wonderful. I, I don't think I'll miss another one. Okay, great. No, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Linda. Mandy, you next. Hi, I just wanted to find out what's your um, feelings on urine therapy towards allergies? Uh, uropathy, urine therapy, it can be helpful. Yeah. It can be, definitely. Um, people have done it. Um, 
We've tried it. We haven't had great success um, in, in some cases, but in some cases it can be helpful, yes. Okay, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Andy? Hello. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I came in a little bit late, so I'm not sure if this is um, pertinent to your focus tonight. But um, I've, for years, I've had quite radical varicose veins. Um, it's the ones that sort of pop out the legs, not the spider ones. I've never been able to figure out a pattern or sometimes they almost disappear. I mean, other times they, they I, I look at, I see them and I'm like horrified. And it's more in one leg. It's more in my right leg than the other leg. Um, and years ago, I went to a, a, whatever they called the specialist. He wanted to operate. I said, no, to take a hike. And mm -hmm. he, he, he said I would get all these sort of sores or whatever by the time I was 50. And uh, the sores, are actually, there was some sort of bruising. It was in my mid-30s um, that you could see on the foot already. And uh, the bruise is less now than it was um, when when I went to see him. So, I, but it's just yeah, it's, it's always been a mystery. I, I, what I, I can't put a pattern to it. I used to think maybe it's cheese eating cheese or uh, dairy or whatever. But I don't, I don't really I don't do milk. But um, yeah, maybe I have to come see you. But I'm curious anyway if you've got any input. Yeah, you see, first of all, do you do you take vitamin C for a start? No, I, I do quite a lot of juicing, um, although it, it varies. So I'll do um, typically apples with vegetables or and greens or something. Yeah, you see, you need to, in, in a case like that, I would definitely be doing um, uh, fairly high doses of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. It must be a of vitamin C so it doesn't make your body acidic. I, I would also look, we've got, a, we've got a remedy called blood vessel remedy. That builds up the integrity of the blood vessels and scours them, scours the blood vessels for 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 um, uh, clock, etc. So mm -hmm. you could consider using that. Um, those are the two that I would look at uh, doing, and um, I would I would also look at doing some sort of PEMF, pulse electromagnetic field therapy. So that's magnetic pulses into that area, so that can actually generate new stem cells and. Uh, and help with the uh, repair. Sure. Yeah, even so, even uh, even the ionic foot spas, which uh, recharge the cells, but you need a, a fairly powerful unit, not just the ones that come from China, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. And so you put your feet in water, and what happens is it actually charges the water negatively, so it draws toxins out uh, through the pores in the feet and it recharges the cells because a diseased cell is supposed to be, well, a, a healthy cell is supposed to run at between 50 and 100 millivolts minus. And a diseased cell, for instance, a cancer cell might run at 20 millivolts minus or even in the positive. Mm -hmm. um, other cells like uh, cells that have uh, affected by allergies could be at 30, 40 millivolts. So, so, um, the the ionic foot spas, the magnetic pulsar, they will they will help to recharge those cells. So you need and, a little bit. Grounding. grounding can be helpful as well. But I, I I must be honest, I haven't had startling results. We've done quite a lot of uh, work with grounding, and um, it's okay. But uh, it's I mean I personally, and I'm not saying it doesn't work, uh, because it it puts um, negative uh, electrons into your body. So you, you're receiving um, negative electrons, so it will, it will reduce inflammation. So it can be helpful in that way. So if I just walk in the garden, like first thing in the morning in bare feet, um, on the lawn or whatever, on the grass, on the soil, is that a good thing? good thing? Definitely a good thing. We should be doing that and we should be getting sunshine and all those good things. You know, um, unfortunately in the Western world and that's where we live, really, I suppose, in South Africa. Um, we, we, we've lost, uh, lost touch with nature. We should be walking in, uh, in forests and at waterfalls and if you're in Cape Town at the sea, whatever, you know. So, so yeah, so grounding, ground, grounding can be helpful, but it's not going to be as helpful as using um, actually pulsed magnet, magnetic field therapy, etc. 
Hmm. So where are you based? That uh, if I can. We actually in Edinburgh. Uh, that's in Joburg. Next to Joburg, right next yeah. to Joburg. So it's on the eastern side of Joburg. Uh, whereabouts are you? Um, in Cape Town. Okay, so we'd have to see who could help you in Cape Town. Maybe uh, Marlene would know someone or Tandy and Michelle. My, the other thing, I, my brother's had um, thyroid cancer and he went for conventional treatment and then I tried to get him onto diet and go a different way. And then eventually after, I don't know how many surgeries, he did actually go that way. And he did a lot of fasting and he avoided all protein actually, um, very small does. And he did a lot of fruit. Um, mm. I can't remember, he got hold of some nutritional uh, research center for cancer research, or I can't remember the name of it, Neri or something in the States. And they did, he did a consult, it actually went away and he was almost five years clear and then this year it came back. And then it, I think he's, I worked out, or he also figured that maybe it was, he had his Wi Fi router when he's locked down, working at home, whatever, right in his office. And I've been telling him for ages, I'm worried about his cell phone. And then he, so he thinks it might have brought it back. But yeah, and he, so he just went for another surgery tomorrow. So anyway, you know. Um, yeah. But I'd love to send him, put him onto somebody that really can help him, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, there are so many factors. In, in, in this, you know, I mean, there's exercise uh, with, with cancer, there's exercise, there is, um, as you say, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is a big, mm. a big issue. Um, did he take the jab, this new jab? No, 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 okay. and, never do that. Yeah. And is he, is, does he spend time with people who have taken the jab? Mm, I think uh, sometimes. You know, that can be a factor as well, because it, it is definitely shedding. Mm. and we've experienced it we've, we're i've experienced a bleeding nose a number yeah. of times sitting for an hour with a person who's been jabbed other people in our office have also experienced the same thing so there's definitely a factor and we looked at our blood um and i we deal with a lot of people who have been jabbed we looked at our blood before and uh after having dealt with a lot of um, jab people, our blood changed dramatically. So we had to do a lot of detoxification. Oh. I mean, seriously, it changed. So that is a big factor in the whole thing. Because you know that mm -hmm. um, since the jab started, cancer has gone up by 2,000%. Uh, um, oh. I mean, I, had, uh, I was dealing with two people yesterday, husband and wife, no issues, issues with cancer. They went for the jab, and now they both got cancer. Never had a problem before. Ish. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a, it is a big factor in the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when you're susceptible, you have to keep your immune system really working well. Reduce inflammation, etc. Mm. You know, um, oxygen therapies. There's a guy in Cape Town, I can't think of his name now, a doctor who's got a real rough. Um, I could get his name for you. Yeah, he mm -hmm. does it in Cape Town. Um, and that can be helpful with cancer as well. Yeah. I think we just really have to um, use that pine needle tea and, the, um, and, the, and your pine tincture as well with aniseed that yeah. should be part of all our regimes for the next um, couple of years until things are better and yeah. I think um, if you've got thyroid issues for instance we've got to constantly take things that support our adrenal glands to build up your adrenals again because yeah. it's thyroid is partly adrenal fatigue when you've had a lot of trauma in your life your adrenals go yeah, even even iodine is helpful there. Yeah, yes. So so if someone um, is taking a hundred drops of uh, iodine a day, and uh, he's got um, prostate cancer, but uh, he's um, he's actually detoxifying in, in the in, in the area of the thyroid. Great. So so um, th that's a big factor in, in in thyroid. Is definitely have to to um, 
be supplementing with at least six to eight drops of iodine every day. I take it, um, uh, yeah, which is a chelation. I take yeah. the iodine, um, and it's actually quite pleasant. I just put some in um, in my cup of coffee twice a day. Yes. It makes a difference, and I do it with the borax. Um, and I don't have a thyroid anymore. Mine was removed um, ten, nine years ago. Yeah. So, so, so the iodine can can really help because, um, for instance, it it was it's been used for radiation sickness. So they used it in um, in Japan after they had those nuclear issues. They used iodine was one of their main um, lines of defense against the uh, the radiation. So for your 5Gs and your routers, which which uh, run at very high frequencies, it can be very helpful. So is there a particular iodine that one should get and not get? We, we use Lugol's. Lugol's iodine works well. I'll send you I've the never website. Taken it. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the website. Dr. Steve's stuff is all on there. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. Anyone else with a question? And the, and the dandelion, is that, is, that, is that also helpful, the dandelion for the shedding and so on? Because I've been drinking, since I, I had COVID about a year ago from hanging out to somebody that was recently vaxxed, and I'm positive I got it from him, and then he also got sick, but much sicker than yeah. I did. Um, but I, but I had ivermectin and zinc and vitamin D3 and quercetin and wormwood, so it sorted me out very yeah, quickly. So but uh, but I had a really bad, but I mean, it was really serious. Um, I don't know where I would have been if I hadn't had that stuff, but because um, I popped back uh, the day after, but then I was still fatigued for like 12, 13 days uh, until I came out with full on energy after that, like more than I can remember since I was 12 yeah. or something. <laughs> um, so it was quite interesting. And then I shared as well, I, I kind of I got all these pox, whatever stuff came out of me, itching like crazy. I thought it was bed bugs, but I actually think since it was some sort of shedding or getting rid of toxin out of me. And then, um, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh, so then since then I drank quite a lot of dandelion yeah, so tea. So that's gonna, gonna detoxify yeah. your, your liver and your kidneys. So that will be very helpful for you. Now, I also had a, one of those allergic reactions about two years ago now, this month, um, with those big hives that you showed earlier on your images, gigantic hives, all over my body, ended up in the hospital three times with anaphylactic shock. Nasty. Yeah. But it was an allergy and I cannot figure out what it was. Yeah, so that's, that's when you would do the quercetin very quickly. Um, and that's, that's one of the best uh, antihistamines. The last time I had that anaphylactic shock was I felt it was coming on and the hives were busy pushing up and it's happened so fast within like an hour. I just jumped in my car and went to someone's house that had a, um, a South African rife machine. Um, and I just didn't ask, I said, you are doing a session on me now. And I just got them sat on those bars for about two, um, 20, 25 minutes. And I didn't have a quarter of the reaction. So it, it made a huge, huge difference. Yeah, yeah, electrotherapy is always good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Norma, have you got any questions? You can unmute. Hi, Dr. Steve. Um, this has been such a great um, conversation. And sorry, I came in and missed part of the first part of it. Um, yeah, um, I've had, um, we've been on an organic um, clean diet 
um, for quite some years now. And we haven't had to take any medications or haven't been ill at all. Um, and most of our food, we grow organically ourselves. So we know our source. Um, and then three, three Mondays ago, my husband <laughs> um, woke up feeling really exhausted. Um, he said he had a sore throat, went to work, um, was home by 9.30. Um, he hasn't seen a doctor in 10 years, hasn't had any medication, not a cold or anything. So um, he went to bed. Um, I gave him colloidal silver and um, he basically was sleeping all the time, not eating, um, and ended up by the first day, well, he had terrible sweats whenever he slept and had to constantly get up and change, um, was nauseous. So he insisted he needed to see a doctor. <laughs> The doctor said it was the flu virus and gave him an antibiotic, which did absolutely nothing. Um, by the following Monday, he hadn't got any better. And the doctor, he had actually lost six pair of jeans in a week. Um, and then the doctor took some blood tests uh, for his prostrates and um, his cholesterol and his blood pressure and um, all his vitals were normal. And um, anyway, um, on the Thursday, they admitted him to hospital. And this was Thursday last week. Um, he then was seen by a specialist physician and they did a whole lot of tests. Um, yeah, he was very nauseous, sweating still. Um, they didn't administer any medication. Um, they just put him onto a saline drip and he um, refused to eat the hospital food. I was taking him but he wasn't really hungry. So I was taking him what he wanted from our garden and um, did all sorts of tests, including a brain scan and an ultrasound of the um, um, gallbladder. And um, they all came back negative. And the only thing that came back was that he had, um, uh, they said it was um, viral hepatitis. So, um, yeah, they sent him home on Sunday. He's doing a lot better. Um, still sweating a little bit when he's sleeping, but the nausea is gone. Um, he hasn't had any medication. Um, and I'm just wondering, is there anything else I should be giving him or, and possibly where this could have come from? I know he's been working long, long hours and under a lot of stress and he has worked with, is working with a lot of people who have had the vax. So could it possibly be from shedding? Okay, so it's, it's possible that uh, the shedding could have caused issues within the immune system and his immune system was low, so he, he picked up something. Um, it's also possible that the liver needs a little bit of work. But what I, what, what I would recommend for everybody is, uh, and, and him, is MMS every morning or every day. Because MMS is a very, very helpful substance 
which generates chlorine dioxide. And um, it's, it, example, I take 10 drops every day. Now, obviously you wouldn't start on 10 drops. I take 10 drops every day because I'm with very sick people, vaxxed people all day, every day. So, so for me, that, uh, that's been a lifesaver. Obviously, once it's in the cells, it takes longer. But seeing as improving, I would definitely do that. And as soon as it's well enough, I would do parasite cleanse and a liver flush or liver cleanse. Um, clean the liver out. Um, but MMS uh, can be very useful. And the parasites and the liver, liver cleanse. I'll give you an example. We had one person uh, who he was, this was a few years ago. His liver was so toxic that he he um, was given six weeks to live by his physicians. And he was told about us by some, someone in his family. And he found his brother who, who lives in America and he, he's a heart uh, surgeon. And his brother said, don't waste your money, they're quacks. They don't use medicine, they use herbs, so they'll, they'll just steal your money. Anyway, after, after doing um, the liver flush, some ozone, IV ozone, the parasite cleanse, MMS, uh, he was 100%. So, so the liver, as I mentioned earlier, has got 500 plus functions. So it's very easy for the liver to pick something up if, it's, if, if the immune system's not working well. And the liver can become toxic very easily. Um, so we should all be doing a flush every now and again, maybe every six months if there's nothing wrong with us. Because even eating food can be the cleanest food. The, 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 um, is ash left. It's like a barbecue or bright. You burn some wood, there's always ash left at the end. So when your cells, if they're not working 100%, um, there's debris left there from the, the burning of the sugars, if, if the cellular charge isn't working 100%, the, the cells become toxic and uh, it can build up and then we're very vulnerable, especially in the liver, to, uh, to infections. But I would do MMS. I would, uh, when it's a gut issue, MMS, as colloidal silver works very well. So, so yeah, that's what, that's, what, that's what I would do. And then a flush as soon as it's able. But I would definitely let him get stronger before he does the flush. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. That's wonderful advice, and I'll definitely um, carry it out. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Norma. Thank you, everybody. Dr. Steve, anything else before we log off? No, I think we're good for tonight. Um, as I said, next time I'll do the autoimmune. Um, we might just have to change that date. I could be away on that date. We might have to do it the week before or the week after. We'll have to just see. Okay. But, uh, yeah. All right. Just, Check and let me okay. know and we'll organize accordingly. Thank yes. you so much. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Thank you so Thank much. You.